Hello, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to fit a wide range cassette. The tools that you're going to need to do this job are a chain whip to hold your old cassette steady whilst you undo the lock ring with this lock ring tool. You'll need an Allen key and also if you're going to fit a new chain, which you may need to because of the bigger first gear, then you're going to need a chain tool and a new chain because your old chain might not be long enough. We've also got the cassette here so this is an 1140 Praxis Works cassette and on our bike we have a short cage rear mech so we're going to have to replace that with either a medium or a long cage mech in order to have sufficient capacity for the wider range cassette. What we've got here is a medium cage XT. So you've replaced your double or triple chain set with a single narrow wide ring and you're enjoying the benefits of a quieter, lighter bike. But the trouble is you can't quite make it up some of your local climbs. So what are you are going to do? You can either spend a fortune on an 11 speed group set or a good alternative is to buy a 10 speed wide ratio cassette. And today we're going to show you what you need to do to fit it. So we already know on this bike that this short cage mech and this chain aren't going to cut the mustard when we've got a, a much bigger first gear sprocket. So we're going to have to break the chain using our chain tool and remove the rear mech. We've covered replacing your chain before, but basically if you have a Shimano chain and it's joined with a Shimano joining pin, you're going to want to break your chain with your chain tool at any other pin. If your chain is joined with a quick link, then you should be able to break your chain by hand, like so. If it's very stiff, then you can use some master link pliers to undo the link. Now that the chain is broken, you simply have to remove it. If you are replacing your rear derailleur, you just need to pull the crimp from the end of the cable, undo the cable clamp, remove the cable from the rear derailleur and then unscrew the rear derailleur from the frame. Like so. Next, fit the new derailleur into place. Make sure that the bolt is aligned correctly with the threads in the hanger. You should need very little force to, to get it started. And there's a tab on the back of the mech which has to meet the tab on the rear derailleur hanger. And then we tighten the bolt. We'll show you a close up of those tabs in a second with the wheel removed. So here we have a close up showing the tab on the rear derailleur and how it needs to butt up against this shoulder or tab on the rear derailleur hanger. If it doesn't touch, then it won't work properly. And you can adjust that by undoing the mounting bolt and you can see so that tab can be positioned any way you like and as you tighten the, the mounting bolt it will stay there and your gears won't work properly unless that tab is tight up against the hanger like so. So next we're going to replace the cassette itself. So remove the nut from the end of the quick release if you have one fitted on your particular bike it's not a bolt through. Put the spring and the nut on the end to keep them safe. And then we are holding the cassette still with our chain whip. And getting our HG lock ring tool in place so we can crack open the cassette lock ring. Remove the lock ring. 
and the cassette should slide free from the freer body. When it comes to fitting your new cassette, there's no real way of getting it wrong. The cassette should come in several parts. This Praxis Works cassette has a, has a nice alloy spider and two alloy sprockets. Keep it nice and light. And you'll notice that the splines on the freer body are different sizes in one place. So you'll have a larger gap here and a larger spline on the sprockets here. And that's how they line up. And you just keep going, obviously fitting smaller sizes as you go. These are also held on a spider. And with most cassettes, the rest of them will be individual. So just line up those splines and you fit in a sprocket and a spacer and a sprocket and so on until we get all the way down to the lock ring. These last two sprockets have no spaces at all, they're built in. And that's all of those on. We've got a lock ring, a little bit of grease on the threads and always start screwing this in by hand just to make dead sure that the threads are aligned and you're not going to cross thread anything. It's an alloy lock ring on there so it's quite easy to damage it if you don't get everything lined up properly. Just nip that up by hand and we're going to give the cassette a bit of a spin just to make sure everything's lined up correctly and we're just going to check the spacing, make sure we've not dropped a spacer or anything silly like that. With that in place, we just need to tighten the lock ring. The torque on these is 40 newton meters, which is pretty tight. We don't want it coming undone whilst we're riding. It's about 40 newton meters. And then we're going to refit our quick release. Insert it from the non-drive side and always make sure the the smaller end of your quick release spring goes on first and then the nut and that's ready to go back into the bike. So let's get the wheel back in the bike, make sure it's properly in the dropouts and we're just going to adjust the tension of our quick release. Should take a fair amount of effort to close it, we don't want the wheel falling out and that's sitting in the dropouts nicely. As this bike has a new rear mech, we're gonna to have to set it up properly. We've covered this before in how to adjust your rear derailleur videos, so it's not, uh, not something that we're gonna go into too much depth with, but the general gist of it is, first of all, we're gonna set our limit screws, so we don't have a, a chain or a cable fitted at all. I'm just adjusting the high stop here so that these jockey wheels or guide pulleys are perfectly in line with this top gear here. And that should be your high stop set. Next, we're going to do the low stop, which is the other screw here. And we're doing exactly the same, just adjusting it and pushing the mech into position because the spring He's trying to pull it down to top gear here. So we're just pushing it up so that it's perfectly in line with first gear, so this largest sprocket. And there's no way that that can overshift and send the chain into the wheel. In order to fit the cable, we need to make sure that we're in top gear at the shifter. So make sure we're all the way down and we're gonna wind the barrel adjuster all the way in and then back it out a turn or so. At this end, we're going to fit our cable into place. So pass the inner cable through the mech, undo the cable clamp and making sure it's routed correctly, i.e. through the small guide at the cable clamp. Pull the cable as tight as you can with your hand and clamp it in place. 
Before we fit our chain to prevent us stabbing us with the end of the cable, we're just going to fit a crimp onto the end. We've covered chain length and fitting a chain before, but we're going to quickly run through it for the video. So you're going to want to be in first gear because what we want to do is to make sure that when we're in the biggest sprocket at the back and the biggest on the front, obviously there's only one chain ring on this bike, it's nice and easy. Uh, we want to make sure that the, the mech is, is basically at, at full, stre uh, full stretch. On a hardtail, this is quite easy to gauge. On a full suspension bike, you want to check that it doesn't suffer from any chain growth so that is where as the rear wheel moves through the travel that the chain stays effectively get longer if you don't check that then there is a chance under full compression that you'll rip your rear mech off the bike break the chain it's going to be messy really expensive so definitely check out our other videos if you've got a full suspension bike basically what you're doing is you're letting all the air out of the rear shock compressing the bike and doing this procedure with the bike fully compressed. So to fit the chain, we're threading it through the rear derailleur. There is a right and a wrong way to do this. So you'll see as it passes through, it's clearing the small metal plate that sits in between the inner and outer plates. And then we're pulling the chain up around the largest sprocket and around the chain ring at the front. Of course we're running a Type 2 or a Shadow Plus mech here. So yeah this is a DRXT Shadow Plus mech so we're going to make sure that it is in the off position. So now we're determining how long the chain needs to be. So we're pulling that rear derailleur so that it's at, at full stretch and we're working out which pin we're going to have to drive out in order in this situation to leave two male ends to the chain because we're going to join it with a quick release chain link. Okay, now we know that, we can drive the pin out to break the chain to the right length. If you're going to join a Shimano chain in the traditional manner with a Shimano joining pin, you need to make sure that you have a female and a male end to the chain. So there we go, we have two male ends. To make it easier to join the chain, we're just going to drop it off the chain ring at the front and we're going to shift down at the back to give us a lot more chain to play with. So here we have our 10 speed quick link and we're simply joining the chain like so. Then we can refit the chain onto the chain ring, making sure that the, the wide parts of the chain fit the wide teeth on the chain ring. And then we'll check the gears, make sure they work correctly. So we put the clutch back on, on our Mac, and we check the stops, going through the gears, making sure that everything's working as it should. All shifting nicely. Nice low gear to get up those hills, all ready to go out and hit the trails. Thanks for watching, see you next time.